Yes, so, okay, great. Uh, my name is Nikhil, uh, uh, and I'm going to talk to you about LTTNG and containers. Uh, I'm a software developer at uh, Ethisales. We're the company behind the LTTNG project, so the main, main developers of this open source project. Um, my background is in both in system administration, but also in uh, development, and I do mostly uh, CI working, build system, and so on. And I maintain the LTTNG packages in the network. So first, uh, what's LTTNG? Well, it's a uh, suite of tools, mostly a kernel tracer, which I hope some of you are uh, familiar with, and also a user space tracer. Uh, also, other parts of the project are the tracing file format, which is called CTF, the common trace file format, which is used by all of the LTTNG tools and also by uh, other tools like uh, JDB, for example, with its uh, trace and well, it's, it's used in JDB, you can do also uh, tracing in it uh, the same format. Um, and also, the LTTNG project, LTT project has a single command line tool which is used to drive both the user space and kernel tracer, and it's also a library that can be. Uh, used in other C applications and used through bindings uh, through Python and other languages. Uh, and there's also a command line uh, trace viewer, which is basically reads the binary trace formats and convert it to human readable text. And also multiple uh, graphical interface, the user interface viewers like Trace Compass and LTTNG Scope, which uh, gives, you, gives you the ability to. Uh, go through traces, explore them, run some analysis on them, uh, uh, try to do some graphs and other stuff. And then why would you use LTTNG? Well, I won't try to explain why you should do this a tracer, but I'll try to uh, tell you why you should choose LTTNG if you're looking for a tracer. Uh, it's very low overhead. Um, it's It's been built to be used in, in product, on production system and it is Today used on production system by multiple companies, um, and unlike some more traditional lagging uh, frameworks, which are comparable some, uh, to tracing in some use cases, uh, it can be enabled and disabled uh, at one time. So you don't need to restart or reconfigure your system. You can activate tracing since and start it whenever you want without affecting the, the rest of the, the workload. Um, and also, there, there's a lot of flexibility in how you would uh, store your traces. So uh, the traces can be, the default mode would be to store them on disk. But also, if you have like this system or systems with uh, low storage, the traces can be st uh, streamed over the network. Uh, they can also be uh, uh, written to uh, memory ring buffers and only snapshot when you need to get the actual data. So the system can be running a long while without using any storage and then just when you need to the actual trace you can extract it from memory. And then uh, for the container part, well, what is a Linux container? Uh, I'm sure probably most of you won't be surprised to know that there's no actual concept of a container inside a Linux kernel. It's multiple subsystems like uh, C groups and the namespaces that are combined to uh, make different uh, third-party implementations like Docker, Rocket, LSD, and many others. So supporting all this in a kernel tracer can be a bit complex since they use different uh, ways of, uh, well, they, they use each container technology has its own way of using those uh, features. So the least common denominator in here is the namespaces, so that's what we chose to use as a first implementation of how we can integrate with containers in LTTNG. Um, so, what's the current status? What can you do today with LTTNG on a container host? So, the kernel tracer can be used on the host. It needs kernel modules to be loaded. Uh, but there's no way to filter events per container. So you get like syscalls and all other kinds of events, but you cannot really easily uh, match them to a specific container. And then for the user space tracer, it can be run inside the host, but it can also be run inside a container. You just need to run two instances, like one instance per container. Um, 
But again, there is no uh, there is no information that would make that would be or you would be able to correlate like a trace from the host side with the trace from the user space inside the container right now. So how can we fix that the, today? Well, we have currently some uh, patches where we have the support for namespace context. So what is a context? In LTTNG, a context is basically metadata that you can attach to uh, each event in, in the kernel. So for example, um, existing contexts are PID, for example. So when you get uh, a syscall, you would add metadata to, to, to it to say which PID uh, this is always issued from. And so we've, uh, we've added support to, for namespaces. So basically you can now, when you get a kernel event, you can add, uh, for example, the PID namespace to it, and then you'll know uh, which, in which PID namespace the process that called this is called was. And also, um, we have another feature that is called state dump. It's basically when you start tracing, uh, state dump events will be issued that will basically give you a like a current state of the system. So another thing that we need to add is like a, a dump of the current uh, namespaces that are on the system for uh, or the tree of namespaces for each process. So. Yeah, so those patches are currently not upstream, they're on uh, feature branches. And, uh, yes, so, so for example, here I have uh, the text view of a uh, kernel event for a uh, syscall, the big time of the syscall. So with the with these patches added with the, the, the namespaces I just talked about, so we can see, for example, in um, in, uh, in green we have the PID NS, which is basically the I node number of the namespace in the profile system because that's the only unique ID we can get in the kernel to identify to differentiate one namespace from another. Uh, and then we can see other uh, useful uh, namespaces, which are the TID and VTID. Basically, the TID is the unique ID of a process inside the kernel, so it, uh, like, like it's the uh, thread ID in the root namespace of the kernel. And then the VTID, which in this case is one, is the process ID as seen inside the container, inside the, the namespace of the container. So in, for this, uh, in this example, we can see that the process is called uh, Redis server, and its VTID is one. So we can extrapolate from that that we're running inside an application container, and that uh, Redis is running as the init process, so uh, an application uh, an application container that doesn't use uh, an init process. So in this case, it would be uh, a Redis server Docker container. And then the state dump. So this uh, state dump would give us initial state about uh, each process that are running inside containers. For, so for example, here we have uh, the systemd process, and we can see that um, it's, uh, sorry, we can see that its TID is uh, 1527, so that's the, the, the asymptotic kernel. And then in, we get two uh, PID and uh, state dump event, so we can see that the namespaces are uh, nested. So we see a, the first event as a level of one. So this is the namespace, the pin namespace of the container, and then the other one has a namespace level of zero. So that's the host uh, root namespace roots. And we can see that the TID never changes between those because it's the unique ID. But we can see that the VTID has, uh, will change. So in the NS level one, it's the VTID of one, and in the, on the kernel side, 1527. So with this information, uh, and, the same, and we do the same thing for the user space tracer, which is all basically the same. And with, with all this information now, we, we are able to do some filtering. So we can start a tracing session and say, oh, I just want to trace the syscall that comes from this container. But right now it's not very integrated because we need to know 
what is the PID namespace I know number of our container to uh, filter it. So you can, I'm, well, I don't know if you can see, but we can, uh, with Docker inspect, we can get the PID from the init uh, process, and then with LSNS, we can get this, uh, I, the IO number of the namespace, and then using this information, we can create an LTTNG session that will, that will filter uh, this, and the resulting trace will only contain syscalls that come from process in this container. So we're starting to get somewhere. But then it would be, uh, would it be nice to be able to use like a container name, for example, instead of having to get the IO number. So to do this, we need a way to map kernel IDs to uh, human readable uh, names. So right now, the easiest, so easiest solution we found was to use a small, uh, well, basically a shell script based on what I've shown you before that will iterate over all containers. So you need to write uh, this kind of, uh, a helper for each kind of containers you're running on your system that will basically dump this information inside uh, a user space trace that can then be com uh, uh, combined with a kernel trace and then run through some analysis script, for example. Uh, and here we see that I wrote uh, as a basic implementation that outputs uh, events, and you can see that we just get container name and uh, the container type, and it's PIDNS that we can use to correlate with the, the, the events we saw before. And with all this, uh, you can use uh, analysis tools that we already have, which are called LTTNG analysis, which are basically uh, Kernel, well, based, there are analysis based on kernel traces. So, for example, in this slide, uh, it's probably not very readable, but this is a CPU top analysis. So, it will take a kernel trace and input and it will uh, do uh, a graph of CPU usage per process. But uh, I've modified those and you can maybe see it uh, at the, uh, down on the slide where there's a bit of color that you can also now uh, see. Uh, CPU usage by container, and you can see the container name, its ID, and its type. So there's a, already a lot of those analysis that were provided by the LTTNG analysis project, and they could all be uh, adapted to be container aware. And we can see uh, another analysis here. It's uh, a memory allocator analysis based on page alloc and page free trace points in the kernel. So you could usually uh, filter it on some condition, but now you can add container filter and see which containers letters on your system are doing uh, page allocation and page deallocation. Um, and so with those uh, tools, uh, um, a complete scenario would be to run a uh, kernel and user space tracer on the host so you can get kernel traces and get the state dump or the, the, the name resolution from the container runtimes. And then for the containers where you're running applications uh, that you could uh, instrument with the kernel, uh, sorry, the user space tracer, you could also run one LTT instance in each of those containers. Uh, the version could be completely different from the from the host system. So, for example, if your host is running an older version of, of Linux with a different kernel, where you you don't have to have the same version. So, it's uh, inside the container and outside of it. So, for uh, for deployment, it's it's, it's yet easier. And uh, and then you could uh, stream those also out of those traces too and. Uh, a really demon so over the network and run some analysis uh, offline uh, to, to, to get the, the information you're looking for. So, and what next? So, uh, all the, the things I've shown you are not yet uh, upstream, so we're working on, on merging this uh, maybe for the next release, but we're not sure yet. Uh, another thing that uh, someone else is working on is adding the same kind of things for context and speed up for C group values. So that's being uh, worked on and should maybe land in, in the following months. And longer time improvement would be to instrument container runtime so that we could get events about the lifetime of containers. So 
the events when the container is created, when uh, configuration is changed, and all interesting information that could also be integrated into uh, the existing analysis tool to give you a, a better view of uh, what's happening in the system. And also add a better integration with the existing command line tool. So for example, instead of having to type a big filter, uh, you could just like use LPNG filter dash dash my container container name and the, the the daemon would resolve the container name based on what's installed in your system and, and so on and so on. So having tighter integration between the command line tools uh, and, with, and uh, the different container runtimes. But what we're most interested in is what do you need? So I would very like to hear about you guys what's, or what you are interested in, what your, what your uh, needs are, and what are your use cases. And finally, uh, do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, I've got two quick questions before they even more questions. Yeah. Uh, first questions. Uh, first question, what do you do with nested pin in space? Nested pin in space? Yep. Yes, well the uh, that's where well in the state dumps we get uh, nested events for all the so we can resolve know what's the chain <laughs> of uh, okay. so you just the first right now. I'm sorry? You just fit on the top level right now. Right? Yes, yes. So it's this simple uh, example, yes, but uh, we have the information about the hierarchy of the PID namespace and also the user namespace, I think, which are also hierarchical. Yeah. Okay, uh, the second question is about um, did you see the current discussion around the audit uh, container name that's going on? on I've, the I've heard about it, okay. but it didn't seem to be major enough yet to be something that's used. That's fair enough. Um, I mean, Eventually, we should have some kind of way of tagging containers and cameras. I'm assuming you're going to be using that at that point. Yeah, well, but it's tagging, so it will probably be different for each container runtime. But yes, that that's information that could be uh, more easily uh, instead of having to use both the kernel and user space tracer, we can use only the kernel tracer to get this information. Right. Okay. Other questions? Yes. So the third question is: Is it uh, feasible to do that to the analysis using other tracer? For example, uh, if you be able to, to use the analysis yeah, to, to do the analysis using other tracer. Uh, I, I, I didn't get the, the, the own feature of TTNG to do uh, to, to work with containers. Well, uh, well, I'm not sure. I, well, if you can, can you do the same thing using just pure ADPF tracing or the other or any of the other tracers in the camera. Well, if you can convert your traces to the CTF format then you might be able to run the analysis, but that would imply that the event names and so on are all the same as for LTTNG, so it might be a bit complicated. Questions? Yes. Uh, uh, apologies if I missed this, but what would be the point of running both the user space tracer in your container and also the host space tracer? Uh, we because we want to maintain isolation between the host and the containers, uh, so and, and in between each container. So basically, having if you run well, you could technically run the user space tracer on the host and have it trace process inside a container. But well, first a couple of simple patches would need to be applied because there's expectations that are currently not met. But basically, by by, by mounting. Uh, directory with the, the, the proper sockets inside of your container. I've already, I mean, it, it works, but the, the, the goal right now is to not break isolation, so it, it's totally doable to run a, a user space tracer inside the container. Also, for deploying, deployment purposes, if you have like, different distros in different containers with different libraries, it, it could get very messed up, so it's a lot easier to just have one user space tracer per container. But it, like there's no technical, uh, there's nothing that would prevent it in the end to, to do the one tracer inside of us. Other questions? Or use cases? Apparently not. Well, all right. Thank you. Thank you.